I'm talking with Joe Waller from Cornell University. Joe is the author of Social Information Processing Theory. Joe, what's the theory about? Social Information Processing Theory is about how people get to know one another and develop relationships when they communicate over computer-mediated communication. So this would be through email, text messaging, computer conferencing, and systems like that that we now see commonly over the Internet. And the theory suggests that while we don't have the nonverbal cues at our disposal that we traditionally rely on to size up one another, make judgments about one another, and to exchange, give off a lot of social information uh, about who we are and how we feel, the people adapt to the restrictions of the medium by not only looking for clues in the language that people use as they read messages from other people, but they adapt their emotional and their social expressions to the language that they have available and that that dance and that negotiation of identification and relationship development takes place more slowly but eventually through the language only context of computer mediated communication. Is it possible that all of this information transfer helps us form the impression and so CMC may be uh, just as good as uh, face to face but that face-to-face -face is better in the drawing close after the impression is made. That's an interesting contention. I think the question has to be answered from what kind of intimacy and what kind of relationship is it. I think obviously in the case of romantic love and physical affection, there would be a point at which just chatting online would never get us past a certain point. Obviously, the species would not continue if we didn't get together <laughs> at some point. I've thought of that. As, as we fall in love. And yet, in some research, we find people like each other better as they work together online than the groups in parallel who are working face to face. Now, that is the social information processing theory from the man himself, Joseph Walter. For our presentation, we will introduce you guys to the theory itself by Dima. Then we will define it with examples by Nick. Then we will show you the research process, which contains the activity as well from Patrick and Musa. And then Manny right here will take over and critique on the strengths and limitations of the theory. The intro to social information process theory. The theory talks about how people perceive and get to know each other through different social platforms other than just in person. People have made entire relationships online and even romantic relationships. There is such a length of how far people are willing to give in with just an online relationship having never met in person. People are finding other ways to fulfill things like passion and sexual relationships or even friendships via the internet, email, text, etc. The internet is a place where you can either be yourself or have fun with your identity. Not saying just the idea of not being yourself meaning catfishing, but the idea of parts of you that are hard to bring out in person being a bit easier behind a screen. It's a platform for people with social anxiety to feel a bit more comfortable opening up and having a bigger platform for different types of relationships. The theory does not only apply to people that have never met face to face because that would be limiting the study. The idea is to see how it gets to the point of meeting in person and the reaction to it. Social information process is a theory that we can form those solid relationships as we do in person with just a little bit more time and effort. There's even some exploring of whether the relationships formed online can potentially be stronger than the ones in person. Defining social information processing theory with examples. The first part is development. In development, we talk about how SIP theory was created in the early 1990s by Joseph Walther. Joseph Walther is the Mark and Susan Bertelson Presidential Chair in Technology and Society and the Director of the Center for Information Technology and Society at the University of California, Santa Barbara. His social information processing theory was initially developed to understand how online communication shapes the development of interpersonal and group relations. Walther argues to skeptics that given the opportunity for sufficient exchange of social messages and subsequent relational growth that the online communication is just as valuable and meaningful as face-to-face -face communication, if not more so. Development part two. Walther believes that the relationships only grow to the extent that the parties have first gained 
information to form the interpersonal impression of who they are. Social information processing theory is consistent with the SPT and URT theories in that they assume that as we gain information about others, our affinity for them grows simultaneously. Social information processing theory definition. SIP theory explains online interpersonal communication without nonverbal cues and how people develop and manage relationships in a computer mediated environment. Examples of this are adults, the promptness in response to messages, just as in face to face communication, when someone is speaking to another person and they choose not to say anything as their reply. It is assumed that there is a negative connotation associated with that response. As in CMC, computer-mediated communication, if a person sends someone a message, the promptness in which they reply is associated with the likeness of the person. Furthermore, if a person sends someone a message and the person doesn't reply, it is assumed that they do not want to speak. Children. Social information processing theory focuses on the way children, and often particularly teenagers, process information in social situations. The theory suggests that children with disruptive behavior problems perceive, interpret, and make decisions regarding social information in ways that increase their likelihood to show aggressive behaviors. Such difficulties with social processing can be associated with a history of attachment problems and furthermore, the presence of coercive cycles within the household. As we move on to the research section, we will introduce you to a video applying social information processing theory in real life. Hey. Hello, James. Hey. Sorry, I'm just looking back at my text conversation with Janelle. Everything okay? I, I don't think so. What's going on? Well, you remember a couple weekends ago when we went to that party at your cousin's house and I ran into my ex? Yeah, did something happen? No, no, nothing. No, nothing happened. Truly nothing. We ran into each other. I said hello. I asked her how she was doing and we went our separate ways. Sounds okay to me. You know, sounds okay to me too. So I decided to tell Janelle because, you know, I I'd want her to tell me if she ran into her ex at a party, you know? That seems right. Right. So I texted her and I said, hey, I've been meaning to tell you I ran into Rosie at a party a few weekends ago. It was fine. We talked. Nothing happened. I even put a little smiley face at the end so she'd know it was no big deal. And what did Janelle say? Well, she said, now you're just telling me this now. Uh-oh. Do you think she's mad? Oh, well, look, she used all caps. <laughs> She's upset. That's a lot of question marks. What are you gonna do? I don't know. I just replied to her and I said, it was honestly no big deal, but she didn't reply to that. So I replied again saying, I love you with a bunch of smiley face and heart emojis. Aww. But that didn't help. Janelle thinks something happened between Rosie and me because I waited so long to tell her. Oh. But, but nothing happened. I don't know why she doesn't trust me. This has always been an issue for us. I, like, I'm a good guy. I, I, like, I wouldn't do anything to hurt her. You know what? I'm gonna be the one now to use all caps on her. Why don't you believe me, I did nothing. There. I hope that works. She replied. And? She said, call me. Period. Very short. Well, she's never that short. Sounds like you better give her a call. Good luck, man. In this video, we see two friends talk about a party they both attended. The boy with long hair has ran into his ex at the party, but they had a very civil conversation, and they're still on friendly terms. The boy then decided to ask his girlfriend if she ran into her ex at this party, and his girlfriend was pretty mad about it. They both ended up having a fight through text messages.
we can see the SIP theory be translated into the situation because the boyfriend and the girlfriend are having an argument through text messages instead of having an argument and a talk to each other through face to face. In the second video, I thought it was a pretty good idea that we based off an activity based off this video. The man in the videos was texting a girl he liked and decided to meet up. However, the man entered an elevator with the, with the girl he was texting him, but they didn't know each other since they only knew each other through text messages and not face to face. I thought we could do this as an activity, like where two members text each other, Instagram or Facebook, and we talk about things that we both liked. The event to be chosen for the presentation was Joseph Walter, where he talks about the concept of social information process theory. Walter talked about how dating and romance is playing more and more common through texting and social media. He talks about how online communications is becoming more relevant and popular than the old-fashioned face-to-face communication. He also discusses how people who meet online and develop relationships are attached to their thoughts and ideas rather than their body or looks. Walter also believes that online communication and face-to-face communication can have their benefits and cons on how the conversations in each medium can feel both warm and wonderful but at the same time cold and mean. For this activity, we will start to test the theory by using Instagram as we try to understand on how to know another person on how social information leads to impression formation and relationship development. Walter argues that given the opportunity for a sufficient exchange of social messages and subsequent relational growth, as goes face-to-face -face communication, so goes online communication. The theory also claims that online communicators can get to know each other and develop a mutual affinity by using the medium's available cues to manage relation development. And by doing that, we will use Instagram. The instructions are simple. This activity will require two groups of two people and one moderator. Pick one partner that you have no background information on. Next, each partner will have access to view their partner's Instagram profile. You get to view the content they share, posts they write, photos, etc. for two minutes. While viewing the profiles, you create an impression formation, thinking of what to ask your partner. One group will discuss using face-to-face -face communication, and because of the pandemic, we will use FaceTime or some sort of video chat as a substitute, and another group will discuss using text. Each discussion will take five minutes. The moderator will not be seen by the groups, but will be able to observe how each partner communicates each other. They will take notes of the interaction. Each discussion will also be recorded. Face-to-face -face groups will be recorded via Microsoft Teams or Zoom, and text groups can record through a screen record app. After the discussion, each partner will tell the moderator how they felt in their discussion, applying key concepts of Walther's social information processing theory. First, we will look at Dima and Emmanuel's conversation through text.
Next up is Nick and Musa's conversation through video call. Okay, we're recording. All right, we're good to go. All right, you're live with Nick and Musa. Um, okay, so um, what's the first thing you noticed about my profile? So you like to, you're a very outdoorsy guy. Yeah, I, I like to be outside. Yeah, I see pictures of you fishing, um, on hikings. Uh, could you have you in North Carolina, which looks great, by the way. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. I enjoyed the weather. It was kind of yeah. like what it's been like here the past couple of days. Um, yeah. I remember like a few years, a few years ago, I went to Tennessee, and that was uh, awesome. I love Tennessee. I love live there. Yeah, Tennessee's. I want to go there. Um, I heard they got a little more snow, and yeah. I want to let my dog run around. <laughs> yeah, when I went to Gatlinburg. That was great. And we you, you, said, you went up to do what? I uh, we went to Gatlinburg. It's like a, oh. city, a little town there. It was great. Yeah, yeah, a lot of history there. Uh, there's probably a lot of cool, um, like monuments and like stuff to look at there. Yeah, speaking of your dogs, there's a lot of pictures of your dogs. Oh uh, yeah, thanks, man. Yeah, uh, I have two dogs. One is about to turn five, and the other one just turned eleven. He's an old man. The old <laughs> one's husky. I think it's the older pictures. It's the husky. Yeah, yeah, I'm looking at it now because I was like, I know I have at least one picture of each of them, but I um I archived some of my pictures, so a couple out there. Yeah, and you have two um, what are they called? Like the little the little ones? Oh, the pugs. Yeah, the so pugs those are actually my friends. Um, okay, I was those are bring them up in North Carolina, and um. That, that they got them a couple years ago. I'm not really sure how old they are, but one's really young and one's kind of old. Um, and they like just kind of do pug stuff the entire time and snort and wrestle each other. It's pretty fun. <laughs> yeah. But I have to get a couple good pictures of them sitting still for a second, which is rare. And one other thing I want to talk about with your Instagram, you said that you're the um, here for the memes and it's your recent picture. Is that you in a taco suit? That is me. That is me in a taco suit. All right. That could be a meme. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was funny. Yeah, dude. Yeah, I love memes. Uh, the, a lot of the accounts that I follow are meme pages. Yeah, I, I'm seeing some of the accounts you follow. You both follow Joe Rogan, so. That, yeah, that's, that's, um, I was actually going to say that. So the first thing I noticed about your page is that you don't have any posts. Yeah, I'm boring. I have, I, have, I have no life. That's oh, what hey, is there something yeah. wrong with that, man? Um. Some people are just more private than others. Yeah, but, that's uh, how I am, to be honest with you. Yeah. But if you want to look at my, follow, my following page, it gives you an idea of who I am. Yeah, so that's what I did. So I looked and I saw your – well, I saw your bio. So you got some you got some stuff in your bio. Your communications major. Cookie lover. Dig yeah. that. I see you're an optimist. Always good people yeah. to be around. Um, Jedi, so you must like Star Wars. Yep. All my friends love Star Wars. I um have I never seen it because I just – I want to watch them in the order that they're supposed to be watched in. And um, they're on Disney Plus, so if you, get, if you have Disney Plus, you can watch them all there. Yeah, I understand you're supposed to kind of watch them out of order, something along the lines of that. So I wanted to watch them the correct way. Um, all right. I decided to watch all of them. Yeah. But from yeah, from the people that you follow, I see you're really big into UFC. UFC, oh yes, I love Is that UFC. why you follow Joe Rogan? Uh, or, you follow him more for like his talk, uh, his podcast. podcast. Yeah, I follow him for the podcast. Um, for UFC, I'm just a big fan of Khabib and Connor, and like usually the yeah. big stars. And I, I like watching UFC. Connor. In yeah, I love Connor. He's hilarious. Yeah, he's he's good entertainment. He's just uh, an entertainment machine. Yeah. But yeah, dude, I like I like Joe Rogan a lot. Um, I listen to his podcast. Um pretty regularly yeah, me um, too. i think he's I on spotify and i got my spotify wrapped the other day and it was like joe rogan's the only podcast you binge streamed like that's not his podcast is um really good i think i but the last time i watched his podcast i think it was alex jones and tim Dillon that's just laughing out loud oh dude i watched that one too. same yeah i mean see what joe about alex jones but he's hilarious alex jones is crazy but yeah. he's he's not wrong the majority of the time. <laughs> I, I, I sometimes agree with, with um, Alex Jones. He's, he's sometimes right, sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a like I said, he's kind of a kook, but like uh, 
some of the far fetched things he talks about are like you know kind of accurate. It's weird. Like, it wasn't so, for, you gotta, it wasn't you awards only for the only for the entertainment. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. That's why I felt Joe Rogan did a really good job with that podcast because he kept fact checking him the entire time. So it wasn't that, that's true. These, these asinine claims. Um, but yeah, I really like Joe Rogan. I model my podcast after Joe Rogan. I try oh, to. You, you have your own podcast? Yeah, man. Um, I do. I just started it like a couple of weeks ago with my roommate. Um, oh, what's it called? Uh, it's called The Green Room. The Green Room? Uh, is, it on, we, is it on YouTube or Spotify? It's on YouTube. It's also on Spotify and Apple Podcasts and Google Podcasts. Um, you can find it with The Green Room F9 all together. Just type it in um, if you want to look it up. That'd be awesome. Appreciate it. But um, yeah, yeah, we just started it a couple weeks ago. Talk about a lot of random stuff like sports, music. Um, we talked about the election a little bit. We did a Christmas episode. Um, oh, that's cool. I interviewed my buddy the other day who has got a clothing line. So it'll be stuff it's like the, that. the green room. Yep. All right. It's Tampa, Florida. It's got like a palm tree. So we had this extra room at our house. And what we did was we took it and we turned it into an audio visual room. And we called it the green room because um, are you familiar with like AstroTurf, like the fake grass they put on stuff? Yep. Yeah, we, we put that on the bottom of the, the floor in that room and put a bunch of plants on the walls and stuff. So that's why we called it the green room. All right, I, I, got it. I, I guess I check that out. What both of these formats does well is that we adapt our mediums to communicate with someone and to develop that relationship, supporting on the theory itself. Now let's find out how each partner felt about their conversation. The portion myself and Emmanuel did was the portion of the social information process theory that looked through each other's social media profiles and we decided to go through text to see what we found out about each other during that process it was very interesting to see that we've had many conversations with each other throughout the semester in group projects and how much more we learned about each other just going through each other's social media we were able to conversate many times but it wasn't the traditional seeing each other and being able to pick up on social cues and and physical cues and different facial expressions. So we were able to go through each other's social media profiles and pick up on a lot. It was an amazing program for both of us because we are so similar on so many factors and we agree on so many factors. Um, it was very interesting to see how much we were able to learn about each other in five minutes of seeing each other's social media profile versus the whole semester of just conversating for different projects. So I did a text conversation with Dima and originally the plan was just to talk for five minutes via text, but our conversation just spread out and we engaged in a lot of conversations about a lot of different things on our Instagram profiles. And the conversation ended up being longer than five minutes. I want to say it was maybe around 20 or 25. And that was really interesting to me because it didn't feel like it. And it felt like when I scrolled up and I scrolled through our conversation, like in real life, that probably would have been maybe a 10 or 15 minute conversation. And I think that goes great with the idea of chronemics because you know it's just expected that we were only supposed to talk for five minutes but our construct of time and how we dealt with our time just looked different to where i looked at the timestamps and i was like oh my gosh like wow like this was a longer time than expected but we had such a good conversation it didn't even feel like that so the social information processing theory that joseph b walther created talks about, or better yet explains, how individuals use a computer-formulated or mediated form or forms of communication to develop impressions of one another on an interpersonal level in an online format. And they do this to advance relational communication over time. Now, when taking that and applying it to the conversation that Musa and I had, I wanna focus on the impression portion of that. So for the concept from SIP theory that I want to discuss today is the impression portion of it, how we make impressions of one another online without actually speaking face to face. And so when looking at his Instagram, 
the first thing my thought process and my thought process was to look at the pictures of him and see what kind of things he does and what hobbies he has. So upon looking at his Instagram, I realized that he had zero posts. There was no content, no quotes, no pictures of anything. So I had to make an adaption in order to get that impression. So we had common ground when we spoke. So I turned to looking at who he followed. And by looking at who he followed, it showed, it kind of gave me a glimpse of the type of people that he keeps up with, whether they were actors or athletes or social media influencers. And so specifically speaking, I saw that he followed a lot of athletes that were MMA fighters. So that when we talked, I asked him if he liked UFC. For the activity, me and Nicholas went through our Instagram accounts to view some content that we both posted or people that we followed. The main impression I got from Nicholas was that he was a very outdoorsy type of guy. He, from his, the pictures I saw, he liked to go hiking, he liked fishing, he went to the beach. And, he, and another impression I got from him that he was also a very funny guy as well. There's actually, there's actually a picture of him on his Instagram as a taco. Another impression I got from him that he likes animals. On his account, there's pictures of dogs. Through his follower page, He's following Joe Rogan, who I also follow. We both talked about how we were fans of the Joe Rogan podcast and talked about our favorite episodes. And he even told me that he started his own podcast and made mixed episodes of them. We talked for over five minutes. However, we talked for an extra five minutes. So one of the concepts from Walter's social information process theory that could be applied here is extended time. We use a lot of time to talk about other things that weren't even in the project. We talked about Joe Rogan. We talked about how his podcast, the guests on there, like Ben Shapiro and Kanye West. We also talked about stuff from my account, like how I followed the, m certain movie franchises like Star Wars and Marvel, and how I, fo and how I followed the UFC, and we were talking about the UFC. Let's discuss the strengths and limitations of social information processing, or SIP theory. So let's start with the strengths. SIP does a great job of describing the impact of online-only relationships, which no other theory was really able to do. And this is because SIP uses the constructs of the online world with a different sense of time and space, rather than in face-to-face -face conversation when stuff happens almost instantaneously. And you can look at people's faces and you can see their body language, whereas in the online world, it is still socially acceptable to just text somebody, not so face-to-face -face all the time, to reply when you are available. And Walter provides specific, simple, and testable hypotheses to showcase how online communication and online relationship formation is so different. He explains what to look for in communication that shows relationship development, predicts outcomes of online communication, and addresses how we present ourselves in a different way online versus in person. So this goes back to that self-image formation and that careful construction. Now let's go through the limitations. Now that social media and cellular devices have been around for so long, they have dynamically changed how we create relationships with people and how we view ourselves and those relationships with others. So I believe that SIP needs to be reviewed in a 2020 context because so many young adults and 30-somethings have grown up with cellular devices, social media, and more online relationships. And that is growing more and more with the younger generation. So for example, Generation Z, which most of our lives we have had cell phones, especially in our adolescent and adult lives. Face-to-face -face conversation has shifted due to the increase in online communication. Um, it There's been scenarios described like the lunch table at school where now instead of talking to your friends, you're saying, oh, look at this tweet I found or oh, look at this video. And that's changing how we express our vulnerable sides, how we express empathy to other people. It's harder for us to do so in face-to-face -face context. So with this in mind, SIP definitely needs to be reviewed and reevaluated now that the digitalization of communication has shifted and impacted both our online and day-to-day -day lives.